Hello everyone, welcome to my solo explicator gameplay breakdown slash guide video. Uh, I know this is going to be a long one, so I've included timestamps and chapters so you can skip to what you need. And yeah, I hope you find this informative, find it helpful uh, if you're looking to understand the solo or looking to get into it. Um, I hope you find what you need. So I will start here with this map. Um, this map and the next one I'll show, um, I've gotten from the D2 Solo Raids Discord, which the link to join that will be in the description. Highly recommend you join that if you're interested in Solo Raids and stuff, which I assume you are if you collect on this. <laughs> um, so for the layout, there's, it's pretty, I mean, if you're familiar with Encounter, you kind of know how it works. Um, Main thing is wipe timer, big wipe timer is around 3 minutes and the planetary shift timer is around 30 seconds. Um, and then you shoot the crux in the middle to end the planetary shift timer early. Um, and planetary insight, in case you don't know, um, you lose it by picking up a planet but you can only regain it after planetary shift ends or once you've dunked said planet. Um, so we'll get to that more when we start the gameplay breakdown, which is, it will be in the first set of running. Um, and then also for planetary shifts starting, um, there's two, one of two requirements needs to be met for planetary shift to start. Uh, either both centurions need to be dead and 10 seconds has to have passed, or you pick up a planet. Obviously, if both Centurions are not dead, one of them's alive, you cannot pick up a planet, and therefore you can actually spawn Colossuses, kill them, and then spawn other Colossuses to get a bit of a head start on your planetary shift timer, which we'll see um, in the gameplay. And I will discuss that. Colossuses and spawn layout, nothing too crazy here. Here is a map made by Painter, shout out to him. It shows you the different areas. So if you have, if you pick up a planet at green, you're gonna get add spawns on green, yellow, yellow, pink, pink, red, red, you get the idea. However, if there's already a lot of ads there, you're not gonna get spawns. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're looking to generate more ammo, you probably wanna pick up you want to kill your ads before you pick up, that way you get more ads so you can generate more ammo. But if you're not pressed about that, you can just ignore ads in the middle until you need to kill them for the next round of planetary shift. So, yeah, pretty standard there. Let's move on to loadouts. So, currently the meta after double special got nerfed is to generate your own ammo. This season, we have elemental munitions to aid in that. Uh, next season, it will still be theoretically possible to generate enough ammo with just Sunshot, but it will be a lot tougher. So, we'll see what seasonal mods we get. But currently, the strat is use Sunshot along with elemental munitions, and that's your setup. So, aspects and fragments Heat Rise, Icarus Dash, you got Ember of Resolve. You got Ember of Empyrean, Torches, and Solus. I would highly recommend every single one of these four. I would not recommend shifting them around at all. And then Glide, whatever you want. Phoenix Dive for running. Solar Nade, Incinerator Snap. The only time you'll switch stuff around is uh, Phoenix Dive will switch to Rift for later. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, so for running, you want your ammo finders, you want a loader for sunshot, you can have firepower and bolstering detonation to help with bracers, every resists, you got charged up, that way you're able to have enough uh, armor charge for final stand, because you need a lot more armor charge for that, especially if you're not able to pick up orbs. Got stabs, special finisher to store armor charges, and then I like Recuperation plus Powerful Attraction just to kind of supercharge my Phoenix Dive. Obviously that isn't really needed, you can run whatever you're comfortable with there. For other Seasonal Artifact mods, 
I specifically do not run Overload Hand Cannon or Unstoppable Fusion, simply because neither of those perks are useful, and I would rather have Radiant uh, Anti-Barrier, especially for killing Phalanxes, and you know, if I have those seasonal mods on, I can't get Anti-Barrier, which is a problem. So rec I'd recommend not having those. And then for your other fifth column mod for this current season, you have two, you have three options. You have one, which is what I do, is use Monochromatic Maestro. Two, you use Rapid Fire Ranger. And three, you swap Elemental Munitions for Rapid Fire Ranger. Now, I personally recommend just sticking with Monochromatic. It's simple, it's easy. It's not a lot of, you don't have to do a lot of thinking about it, and it's just free bonus damage. If you want to go for a Rapid Fire Ranger, by all means go for that. Um, you will get more damage if you're able to use it effectively, but the keyword there is if. Uh, I personally did not think damage was tight enough to necessitate Rapid Fire Ranger, but if you find damage tight and you're comfortable using Rapid Fire Ranger, by all means go ahead. Uh, that will mean you would need to shift around these loadouts a bit just so you have like a sniper or something or a trace rifle to proc crap fire ranger. So this is my running loadout, nothing crazy. Kinetic slot is whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, the other two, not really optional. Uh, you can you can run with a rocket instead of eager and that will probably be the meta next season unless we get good ammo generation. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend Eager just because you get enough heavy ammo and it makes running a whole lot easier. Kinetic slot, I recommend a blinding GL for Warlock. It's just it 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 works the best. You just blind the Colossuses, throw your grenades at them. It's easy. And you can do it from range. Unlike shotguns or something. So second loadout here is ammo pickup and also generating your rift. So you swap to healing rift. This is going to be after you finish running planets. And you're going to want to generate this healing rift. That way you have it for your merciless. So you have bolstering detonation, you have focusing strike, and you've got your reserves, you've got your scavs, and you're just picking up ammo. Now I do note here 7 mag fusion. You definitely want that. As for the fusion you use, I personally found Royal Executioner to be fine um, and both iterative. Royal Executioner, while it's not as good as iterative, it, it, you synergize the, uh, the reserves so it doesn't really matter. It basically effectively is like the same. Iterative, you don't get reserves because you can need that charged up so I mean maybe you're able to go without, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Especially if you get uh, infinite surges, but I personally just do not like relying on that. But any 7 mag fusion will do here. Um, I recommend rapid fires or a solar that solar fusion so it synergizes. And then next loadout, this one's, yeah, all the mods and stuff is for generating your class ability. The next loadout is basically the same, the only thing you're going to do is you're going to switch the mod here to backup mag, uh, that way, oh wait that's actually going to, whatever, <laughs> that way it becomes an 8 mag fusion and it's going to convert better to merciless. You also want to make sure, no reserve mods here, uh, and that, that's just going to help ammo generate, ammo uh, conversion. And you can, you can have Luna Faction boost on here, that way if you want to drop your Rift as a Luna Rift, you can absolutely do that. I think I did this and then I like forgot every single time. <laughs> so yeah, um, but it's nice. The other mods don't really matter just because you're only really dropping Rift on this loadout. And one thing to mention, Kinetic Slot I am using New Pacific Epitaph. Um, if you have it with lead from gold, I would recommend it. Otherwise, whatever you're comfortable with. Obviously, if you're using Rapid Fire Ranger, this is probably going to be a lead from gold snipe. Um, but yeah, so I just like this GL. That way, I can clear up ads before damage. 
And so the actual DPS. So this loadout, we've got Merciless and Rain of Fire. Rain of Fire for both loadouts. We're using four times Focus Light to get that 16% bonus damage after picking up a light buff. Now keep in mind, Focus Light, it's not while you have the light buff, it's after you pick it up, you get it. So what that means is, say I pick up focus, say I pick up light buff, I now have 16% bonus damage for 20 seconds. This lasts even if I pick up dark buff. So that's, it's a technique called stealing plates. So say your damage is dark light dark, you can start on light plate, right? You get that buff, you get, you get proc focus light, and then you move over to dark plate and actually do damage. While explicators, you know, jumping down from his platform. So, it's nice. Um, I don't think I stole plates at all during my run, but it is tech that is useful to know, especially if you need a little bit more damage. So, here is just nothing crazy. You got targeting, you've got loaders, you've got surges, you've got time dilation. It's what you'd expect. Uh, and then rocket damage is also what you'd expect. This time we switch one focus light for release recover, just so, especially in third damage phase, if we need a little bit of healing, we can just switch to the other plate or let the buff run out and get health back. Uh, again, it's just surges, time dilation, you got resist mods now, no more charged up because you already used up your fourth armor charge on merciless damage. And then you got dexterity, loaders, what, just, just the normal. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything for loadouts. And yeah, I will move on to the gameplay breakdown. So, let's see. So I'm going to start by popping heat rises. I'm going to just dive and get my restoration up, get my radiant up. And now I'm just clearing ads. Again, if you have overload hand cannon, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, so don't troll yourself, because I'm just shooting right through the shield. You have overload hand cannon? It, it, that ain't happening. <laughs> um, so here what I'm doing is I'm doing something called staggering the centurions. Um, like I mentioned it before, you kill one, and that way you can kill the Colossus and then come over to the other side without having planetary shift start. It just gives you more time on your planetary shift. It makes it a lot easier. Obviously, this does soak up more time overall. So if big timer is an issue, honestly, I would recommend just running, trying to learn to run faster, bring clear ads faster, because you can comfortably stagger Centurions and it does help quite a bit though it is absolutely unnecessary on the second phase of running. So here I'm breeding left side planets and I'm going to pick up and dunk this planet so I get rid of my planetary insight and while I do that I prep this Colossus and I'm just gonna let it die. So now I'm gonna read right here I know 3-5 process of elimination so I I like reading from this spot right here that I end up going to just because you can see these two planets here and you can process of elimination the third if needed which I do do here. When you're running the bottom planets do whatever you need to do to take care of these colossuses. You can blind them, you can kill them, you can completely ignore them, whatever floats your boat. Then once you're done you want to shoot crux. I do not do it here because I want more ammo, so I'm just going to kill adds to get more to respawn. Because once a planetary shift ends, uh, adds are going to respawn in middle. And if there's already adds there, you're not going to get new ad spawns. So I just wanted more adds to get more ammo, basically. And I was not worried about losing a few seconds on the big timer. You'll notice I do use Sunbracers a bit, but not that much, only when I know I'm not really going to be using Sunshot and the adds are going to respawn anyways, so mainly just to keep my buffs up.
Right. So now this is going to be prepping for running planet submit. I can see my wipe timer is not close to the um, going up the wall. That's typically when I start going, okay, I need to really start moving. But I'm fine, so I'm going to stagger Centurions again. I highly, highly, highly recommend stagger staggering Centurions for the third phase of running. And that's just because it makes it a lot easier to deal with the Colossuses, and there's a lot less going on once you finish running the planets and you're trying to do free DPS stuff, like generating your rift, picking up ammo, you don't want to have to be dealing with Colossuses as well. <laughs> I troll there. So you can see I'm deliberately leaving ads in mid up, and that's just so I can use those to get my rift back. So I'm stopping here, and now I'm going to be building rift, picking up ammo, and making sure to keep heat rises up as much as I can, because I want that for damage for double dash for double rain of fire reload. So I get my ammo, come here. I don't end up dropping a Lunar Rift. I think I heard the planets go, so I'm like, okay, I just need to swap quick. So I do that, and I also don't steal light, because you can see, damage is already starting, so I just need to get a move on. And you can see me jumping for my Merciless kills, and that's just to extend my Heat Rises timer, which yeah, will help here because I get more, I get uh, an extra rain of fire reload. And I didn't actually save grenade for damage, which is unfortunate because um, you can use that to proc mono. So you see right here, you're just seeing the rotation I use for like no mono, just standard um, rocket rotation. Yeah. I won't go too much into detail about the rotation since it's easier just to watch it and learn from that then I can explain it. <laughs> um, here I accidentally don't stagger the Colossuses and I instead of snapping the Scions I snap the Colossus and let the Ignition kill the Scions to get my proc. Just that way I'm killing this and, uh, Colossus faster. And then here I... <laughs> I actually did, I realized while flying over, I'm like, hmm, I don't have uh, my restoration, so I had to proc that really quickly. And you do see me sometimes shooting sunshot while grenades are going on around, and that's just to proc mono to help burn down enemies a little bit faster. So here, it's just normal ammo generation, just trying to spam elemental orbs as much as possible. And you will notice that the Colossuses are going to be a bit of a problem here in a second. Uh, because I haven't dealt with the bottom Colossuses, and I don't properly deal with the top ones. So right here is about to be a problem. So I use the Blinding GL to prevent the stomp. But in doing so, I take a ton of damage, and then I have a blinding missile uh, barrage come in while I'm getting mini gunned, and I have to panic dive to keep myself alive, and I just dip the all the way out of there, and then I immediately have another moment because I did not, <laughs> I did not think. So this is this is where, why you might want to deal with the bottom Colossuses. Yes, you can ignore them, but if they take a more aggressive position, um, they will start screwing you over. So you need to be aware of that because look how fast my health gets burned here. Again, I do the thing where I launch a blindy GL at this guy. No, I don't. I don't actually. My health just gets torched. And this is through Resto X2, through double um, 
resist. And frankly, I'm lucky to be alive at the, like in this moment. Um, like, I should have died to the Colossuses in the ads. So definitely be watching your lower Colossuses if you decide to leave them alive. And don't um, try to avoid picking up ammo bricks. You're gonna see here, I end up picking up a lot. And I have 38 sword. Like that is, obviously I'm not trying to get more sword ammo, but I'm gonna accidentally pick up bricks. And that is going to, like right there. Um, that's just gonna reduce the amount of rockets I have. So here I'm just prepping losses, trying to kill them. And I actually, uh, mess up. I don't, I'm, I'm misplacing my nades and stuff. I'm not taking good enough care of their health bars and stuff. So both the ones on right are still alive. I mean, they are on like one HP, but they're both still alive. Uh, so, yeah. Again, picking up another unnecessary ammo brick. But it's okay, because enter damage setup with plenty of ads around to build um, my rift. And here I throw away my melee and I throw away my nade, which is really, really, really sloppy. Uh, so I'm just not going to have mono again for DPS, which is losing out on a lot of free damage. But place my rift, do my swaps, and immediately it's time for damage. So here... You're gonna notice, notice I damage up on the root. Um, that's just because I find it easier. And then also my, my rift placement is off of the plate. I always do this purely because if you don't have focus light on and you get that buff, say while you're placing rift and or you're swapping, uh, if even if you do swap to focus light, you're just not gonna get that damage buff. So it's. For me, I like to play it safe and just not worry about it. Uh, place my rift off of the plate, that way I can for sure get that damage buff. So here, I make a very interesting and frankly good decision, although I do scuff it a bit. Um, so I know I have my melee, I know my damage is not the best, so I'm going to use Feel the Light buff and my Radiant Melee to crank a little bit extra damage out here and so I get two rockets with the 16% field of light buff both still with radiant also with mono and that's just going to help my damage a bit um, because it was relatively low uh, you can clear from like half health but it's not it's not by any means ideal. I wouldn't recommend it. Here, same deal, clearing ads. I'm gonna be stacking up my buffs. I'm able to read it's there. Prepping the Colossus, just the normal. Uh, and here, I spot two ammo bricks right now. I got one, I got two. So I already know, this is something you wanna keep track of like in the background, is where your ammo is. So I know these two close together, this means I'm, this is gonna be it, ammo for one of my DPS phases. So either the third phase or final. Now ideally you wanna be picking up side ammo bricks on earlier phases because you're gonna run into them while doing planets and you don't wanna be picking them up unnecessarily. And also for final stand, it's a lot better to have your bricks in mid than off to the sides. So if you're constantly picking up bricks in, off to the sides and leaving the ones in mid, I mean, obviously you're gonna have more bricks in mid. That's how it works. If you, <laughs> if you leave them up, they stay up. Um, unless of course, Explicator knocks them off or Backpacks knock them off. In which case, uh, that's unfortunate. So if you see bricks near an edge, you probably want to pick that up as well, just because they have a very, very high likelihood of falling off the map. And no point in saving a brick if you know it's just going to fall off. 
because you're just not getting it. So here, I know I need to generate ammo because I only have two bricks, which is probably enough for a damage phase. But I'm like, okay, I <laughs> one damage phase is not two. I still need more ammo. So I'm gonna work on ammo quite a bit here. It sacrifices some speed, but fortunately the big timer is not really that much of an issue. Uh, so I'm just chilling. So here, I make an interesting and good decision, which is leaving this Colossus up so I can kill him right after I end Planetary Shift. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna let me instantly read the mid planets. Now you can always do this like regardless, but I thought it was just a, a cool thing. So here, read the planets double dark i realize i should have started on the light side in red earlier because i gave myself the ability to but it's really not that big of a deal and one thing i do want to mention is i know light is left um so that means i can kill the left ads because i'm going to be doing merciless on right and you know um i don't need the left ads However, I do Merciless for final, which we'll touch on in a second, uh, but that's the reason why I don't end up killing adds on left. But for the other phases, you absolutely can do that. If you know you're doing starting damage on left, kill the right silence if you want, that sort of deal. Um, so here I make sure to reproc my bracers and hold my grenade, that way I have it for damage. Um, I do leave that left scion up just for Merciless. Um, and here, I'm just gonna go into damage. I actually have both of the things I need for mono and radiant melee is absolutely necessary uh, for third phase damage. So here, instead of hopping on the light plate or heading to cover or anything, I'm going to swap in the middle of everything. Now, I actually recommend you do this. Um, because your health is already going to be high from being in a healing rift. Um, and then because you're swapping immediately to release your cover, right? Uh, you're just going to walk on this plate and immediately get your restoration. So this is actually going to give you more healing than just hiding and then and swapping and then stepping on the plate. Obviously, if you didn't have healing rift and you're critical or you walked out of your healing rift and got nuked or there's a ton of adds up and you're getting shredded maybe it'll be a different deal but generally i recommend just swapping in the middle of everything before stepping on a second plate for third phase and here you're gonna see i was expecting my radiant to last longer so i'm just gonna do rockets right away when i really should be doing radiant melee for radiant and mono but it's fine I do rockets and then here I troll myself so I go for this next rocket and I dash and as I'm dashing I pass over this dark plate and that causes my rocket to hit immunes so just don't troll uh, be aware of your positioning be aware of what plates you're on or next to um, so you can avoid stuff like this where you're just hitting immunes with an entire rocket which is pretty problematic here I'm procking mono and I think I could have run over to get my ammo a bit sooner but not that big of a deal. I'm gonna drop wither on these scions because I'm afraid they're gonna kill me and I know I've got left scions up for merciless final. So merciless final I mentioned a couple times it's pretty straightforward. What you do instead of the old meta of wither rocket shoot to loot your entire, entire final you gotta get a ton of heavy bricks what you're going to do is you're going to run and pick up your ammo manually and you're going to just do two mags of merciless into rockets same with same as every other damage phase uh, basically 
And what this is going to do is it's going to remove a lot of pressure in your heavy ammo. You can see I only have seven ammo and I've got no bricks anywhere. So without Merciless Final, this is sim this is just not clearable. Uh, maybe you could cope Supremacy or something, but it's really just not clearable. Um, so especially with having to generate your own ammo now, this is going to alleviate some pressure on that because you always have more than enough special ammo. And it's overall just better, just lets you kill from higher health, you get more damage output in final stand. You don't have to worry about shoot to looting rockets in final stand. It's simple, it's easy, it's just better. So here, I'm going to actually make a big mistake, and that is not swapping to this ammo conversion, the 8 mag. Uh, no reserve mods before swapping to Merciless. And here you're going to see why that's so important, because I only get 15 ammo. Now normally I would get 17. So 2, two ammo might not seem like a lot, but when each shot does 100,000 damage, that's 200,000 damage. That's basically a full rocket. That's not a negligible amount of damage. You know, I have a brick here, but I just didn't notice it. <laughs> um, here, I troll myself. Again, so if you notice for a second here, this is the tornado goes off right now. And you can see my buff is now counting down. It's no longer at seven seconds, it's at six uh, because the plate is gone. And I am completely unaware of this, uh, so, which you should not be. You should always be aware of what plate's explicator is taking. And I also do another mistake, which is I ego. Never ego, period. Um, it's just, there's just no point. So in my head, I know I've killed, so I've pushed final and killed with two mags of Merciless and three, three bait and switch rockets, which means I just didn't need to switch loadouts. However, this is not like the other finals I've had, where I didn't push final, I messed up my Merciless, so I lost 200,000 damage on my Merciless. Um, and you're going to see, I shoot my grenade launcher shot, but you can see it for a second. Very faintly, you can see the immune. I lost my buff, so my grenade launcher shot hit immunes, so I don't have bait and switch. And that's going to make this final a lot tighter than it should be, because I'm just frankly being stupid. Um, so I'm going to do my rockets, and I'm like, oh, surely my rock this rocket kills, because I'm thinking, oh, I've shot three bait and switch rockets. But they're not bait and switch. Um, so I'm like, oh, shit. Um, and I shoot this rocket, which also hits immunes because my buff ran out. And then I go to re-grab buff here, uh, obviously because I need it. And you're going to see how close me not swapping made this. So I get the buff right here, right? You can see seven seconds. And right here, this plate is no longer activated. So I almost didn't even grab buff in time, which would have meant I didn't kill. So definitely always swap to your wither rockets um, after you do merciless. Don't be stupid. And also make sure you're procking bait and switch. So I want to show my third phase slash final from my other clear that I uploaded, which is a lot cleaner and it's a lot better of an example of what to do. It also shows you that you can kill from a lot higher health. You can see I'm nearly at half health here. Our boss is nearly at half health. You can kill from a lot higher. Um, I think my record is somewhere around the T right here. Uh, you'll probably push it higher, but obviously you don't want to do that. And if you're only hitting this damage in two phases, it's already rough. Um, <laughs> so let's watch this one. So here you can see I'm taking stock of my ammo. Um, so let's back up actually a second so I can see what color the planets were. So dark, dark left. Um, so I know I'm going to be ending damage mid plate already um which is fine um it just means i'm not i can pretty much go to whichever side i want for my ammo uh for final stand so when i'm running here i see these two ammo bricks right here so i'm knowing i already know okay i want to go left side 
stage for my ammo. So I see another brick here. Um, so I'm gonna go head over to the right. Uh, apparently I remember I have bricks top right, which is smart. Um, so grab those. You can see I'm using iterative. It's basically the same deal. I do have unstop fusion on, which do not <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> um, so this was old strat. Um, I used Phoenix Dive instead of Rift, so I didn't have to worry about it regening. But um, it's not worth it because you need you need to get these two Scion kills, otherwise you're not gonna have your restoration's gonna run out. So it's just Rift is better. You can. Uh, you can always swap your uh, class ability back to Phoenix Dive on your rocket loadouts. That way, a, you have more of it charged when you go back to running after damage. Um, here, just executing a very clean third phase. I know I have four seconds of Radiant, so I don't need a re-Radiant here. Um, two of the rockets aren't Radiant, but that's fine. Proc my Radiant, proc my Mono. And here I'm going to, yep, proc Mono again. And one thing to note, I shouldn't have been running back to the plate. I had plenty of light buff timer, so I should have been running to my ammo. But it's really not that big of a deal. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's totally fine. Picking up my ammo. And you can see, yeah. Drop down the well and a cleaner to Mag Merciless. Um, I do scuff it a bit, <laughs> but I guess uh, the fact that both of my clears are with a scuffed final just goes to show how easy final stand is with Merciless and how much wiggle room you have. Because here, I miss my Wither Horde. So I'm losing Wither Horde damage, I'm not having bait and switch. Both these rockets, I don't believe, are radiant. Or, no, the first two are. Um, and then the last one has just nothing. It's hitting like a wet noodle. Do you see it? Let's see. 98 and 30. No radiant, no bait and switch. It's just not doing damage. But it's totally fine. It's not even close because it's merciless final. Uh, yeah. So. Definitely, definitely, if you have done Explicator before, you're looking to do it again this season. Merciless Final all the way. Uh, it is so much better than Standard Final. I like almost can't even put it to words. It makes it so much easier. But yeah, that is pretty much it for Explicator. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all found this helpful. Um, just want to say um, thank you, thank you everyone for all the support recently. It means a lot. I really appreciate it. And also, um, if you're not subscribed yet and you want to consider subscribing, uh, please do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I will be working on the Nez guide um, either tonight or tomorrow. We'll see. I'll try to get that one out as well. And then. I got stuff I gotta do, um, but yeah, I hope y'all find this helpful. Be sure to check out the D2 Solo Raid server. Um, there's a lot of good people in there. Uh, they know a lot of strats and tech that I may have missed or may not have covered in this video. So if you're looking to really, really get into it, I would recommend heading over there. Um, and you can also reach out to me on Discord if you want. My Discord will be in the description as with builds and everything else. So yeah, um, thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all next time.